Saber Rights, Anonymous here. Um, welcome to also all of our new people. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers over the uh, past uh, uh, past few weeks here, and um, I don't know. It's almost like there's some something going on with Star Wars lately. But uh, anyway, welcome to everybody. Um, in that kind of spirit, I thought. I'd answer one of the most common questions we get on YouTube, which is, what are the sabers you're using and where can I get them? Um, so I thought I'd go over um, all the sabers that you might see on our channel. Um, to start out, you kind of have to go through and see things in a little bit of, in some tiers. Um, I separated into kind of three tiers. We have a entry level tier, um, which we'll go into, which is kind of inexpensive sabers, ways that you can kind of get into the hobby. We've got the kind of mid-level custom tier, which is much higher quality, um, usually uh, more features, better better looks, better uh, artistry, all of that kind of thing. And then you've got the high-end customs, which are usually one-offs, small runs, um, that kind of thing. And then, of course, we've got the do-it-yourself type of thing, which we'll um, touch on as well, which I'll touch on as well. Okay, so, uh, first off, the one, the types of sabers you're going to see most uh, in our videos being used by people, if you ever come to one of our classes, you're probably going to use one of these, which are uh, the Ultra Sabers. Um, I'll put links to all of these companies down in the uh, comment section. Um, or the uh, uh, description. So Ultra Sabers are really, really simple. They're just a glorified flashlight. They have a simple guarded switch. These are the most inexpensive ones on the market. Um, you can get a stunt saber, which means without sound. So <clears throat> it's just literally just a flashlight. Um, and you just get a, basically a metal tube with a button. Um, they have various setups. You can get different features. Base price for one of these you can probably spend for this, which is the uh, Dominix uh, version 2. Um, they have different versions and kind of different sculpted hilts, that kind of thing. But this is the most basic in, in there. Um, you can see here's another one of theirs. I believe this is called the Standard Issue. Um, it is, again, very simple. It's a little thicker because here it has a pommel which is MHS compatible or modular hilt system from the Custom Saber Shop, which we mention a lot. Um, so that's a advantage of Ultra Sabers. Very affordable. Um, their stuff is compa MHS compatible, so you can get new stuff and start working on things. It's a very easy entry kind of level point. Um, drawbacks to them. <clears throat> Anytime you go mass produced and quick turnaround and stuff like that, there will be certain flaws sometimes. Um, some of the construction, any company is going to have problems with that at any point. Um, these companies are growing really, really fast. So as, as they grow, these, these situations will be worked out. But you have to keep that in mind. Um, so quality some kind, sometimes can uh, be a little dodgy. Um, they, uh, you're going to hear a lot of hate directed towards particular saber makers and everything like that. Don't really buy into that because pretty much they're all just about the same and it's really what you want to invest and in, what you're looking for that's really important. Um, so everything's going to have its variance. Um, at the lower end here, we're talking more variance. So there's more chances of something going wrong, all of that kind of thing. And you expect less of that as you go up in tiers. So that's the the Ultra Sabers. Now Ultra Sabers don't, they like I said, they start there and then they go up. Um, so you go here, which is a little more expensive, it's probably around I don't know what they go for now, but probably around 90, 90 bucks for something like this with a little bit of extra machining and uh, that. And then you have kind of cannon hilts with sound, which will run you about. 300 or so depending on what features you get so it can go up to that um, and when you start investing um, so now the other kind of one in that tier is Saber Forge now they have a lot of different sabers available 
they're just a little bit more expensive than uh, Ultra Sabers. I think you can get a hilt, an empty hilt for 50 and it's about a hundred for a stunt. Um, they have um, more cannon type hilts like this one here um, which is a, a Qui-Gon Jinn inspired hilt and um, generally have kind of cooler designs and and neater neater little uh, features on you know surface features on, on, on the machining and all that kind of thing again we're talking about something that's machined usually in large bulk so um, some of the machining can sometimes be a little rough in parts um, sharp edges are not uncommon like in here um, I had to file some of these things down just to get it down um, <clears throat> At times, I've had times where the thread lock starts to come loose and it starts to clunk around. I think you can hear it in this one. All right, and that's not, you know, and I know that there's a shroud on this, but it's it's actually coming from a joint right in there, which I have to, to, to look into. Um, but the nice thing about it is, is it does also give you a D do it yourself um, option because you can get these hilts empty and then just put in your own electronics and stuff like that. Um, also, again, another big advantage is they have lots of cannon hilts, the Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wans, all of that. Um, so, and they're, they're priced at a certain point where most people can afford them. So, um, it, you, you might have to save up if you want something with lots of sound and lots of cool, uh, cool sound cards and, and features like that. But, generally speaking, Saber Forge is very affordable. And so, they're also very popular and you see them on, on a lot out there so uh, another one to keep up so now we kind of move up <clears throat> we'll kind of move up to uh, the next tier which is kind of the the mid-level uh, thing and um, <clears throat> I have examples of a couple of companies that I would consider in that range now mid-level would be there's kind of more customization it, it's more of a custom kind of hilt, much more artistry involved in it, a little bit more uh, machining, personal touches uh, that, you know, canon or non-canon, a lot of them are non-canon, but, um, you know, all, all that. But they're not quite to the high-end customs, which we'll get into last, which can run you into thousands of dollars and stuff. Um, so this is an example of um, ooh, uh, Genesis Custom Savers. Um, they, uh, uh, Rob Petkow, um, is the owner and Sabersmith out of there. That's another thing with most of these companies. They're usually very small, a couple of people, one or two. So you're dealing directly with a single person or, or, or you know, a very small staff. So a lot of personalized attention. Um, Rob works out of, um, Alberta, Alberta, Canada, I believe. Um, if, hopefully he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Um. But uh, here you're going to be going into, I don't know, if this is a Stunt Ascend, which was his kind of um, entry-level um, upgradable um, hilt that he, that he designed um, a few years back. Um, they're very, very, I mean, they're excellent hilts. They've become a mainstay in the community. Um, if you can get your hands on one, definitely. They're definitely worth the money. Um, <clears throat> He also has he did um, one of the first curved production models, the Bad Axe. I had one of those. I I, get, I actually sold it, so I don't have it here to show. But um, he also goes into one-off customs and into the high-end custom thing. So these these companies that usually deal in the in the mid-range will often go into the the high-end custom range as well. So Rob will do lots of ones that are one-offs, beautiful pieces that have lots of detailing in them, little features like bone and, and, and leather and etching and all that kind of thing. So so it goes from, you know, um, semi-production level and on up. Um, so there's that. But you're going to be, expect to spend at least 200 um, with with these guys. Um, Vader's Vault is another one. I do not personally own any Vader's Vault Sabres, so I cannot eh, give you an example, but uh, we do have a weapons locker, which I'll link to there um, with our uh, mas Headmaster Nero, who uh, had the uh, uh, Reven, I think it's called. 
Um, now the other ones are, I did a review on this recently, the uh, Saber Z, which are kind of like their own little modular system. So they can, you can remove all of these pieces. Um, I, I, I know somebody asked what the inner diameter of these, these was. I have not yet been able to uh, find the specs. I mean, I, I, I can't find my measuring tape either. But um, anyway, um, these are a little smaller um, diameter. Um, you're looking at a little bit more money, uh, but they are quite nice. Um, they have lots of options, lots of features. You can get a sound card, and they're very easy to do it yourself with because this plate comes out and you can switch out your buttons and, and all your guts there. So um, the Saber Z stuff is, is pretty good. I Some people find this a little bit expensive for what it is because it doesn't look as custom as, say, a Vader's Vault or a, or a Genesis Custom Sabers, but still, they're in that kind of price range, so we're going to kind of put them there. Um, <clears throat> so now the other thing that you'll see a lot is... Um, these, which are the FX Hasbro, I think this is the Black Series now, and they have the string blade and all that, and sound. It's not usually very loud. They're not usually very bright. Um, these blades is, is, are not suitable for combat because the strings in them will break, and you will get dark spots in your blade, so try to keep them nice and all that. Um, a lot of times people will take these hilts, which are metal and quite nice and very canon appropriate, and get them adapted to other saber parts or into an all in hilt system, that kind of thing. Which brings us to the top tier, which is the one-off customs or the high-end custom kind of thing, where you could send something like this or another saber that you have to them to upgrade. Um, or get one of their short run production savers which is usually limited a very limited amount of amount of them um, they're usually only hilts so that you're there's lots of do-it-yourself stuff it's kind of expected that that you would do it yourself although I'm I know they um, most of them do installs so um, Darth Alice is uh, obviously one that is very popular um, this saber that I'm using right now I'll be doing a full weapons locker on it pretty soon um, is the Darth Alice V5 Katana, I think. Um, and I have been loving this this guy. Um, this is a stunt. It is, I believe it was about, no, it was at least 400. So we're, you're dealing with smaller, more hand-worked, kind of artisan quality stuff with this. It's extremely high quality. It's very, very tough. Darth Alice himself is just incredible. With, with coming up with this stuff. But, again, we're dealing with a very, very labor-intensive thing being done by usually one or very few people. And so there's a lot of labor, there's a lot of love, but the quality is, 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 um, is quite high. Um, the other thing that I had Darth Alice do was upgrade the, uh, my uh, Saber Forge uh, Redeemer. So that's another thing that uh, high-end custom sabers and that kind of thing um, will do. Um, now, other than having one-offs, which I, I don't, I am trying to design a, a one and get somebody to make it for me, but I don't have one yet. That's my that's my holy grail. That's 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 the one I have left. But um, as far as like incredible collector's items, you're talking. Something like this, the uh, four switch from Solo's Hold. I'm going to do a full uh, review on this. I did a uh, kind of preview of the prototype, and I'll link to that down there as well. Um, but this was a very, very short run, a very small run. I don't remember how, how many were really um, total. I'll find that out and, and try to get that there. But... You're talking really, really exquisite work in something like this. This is, very, you know, almost completely screen accurate, and of course, coming from a cartoon, that's hard to do. Um, it's extremely comfortable, very well balanced, unbelievably well put together. The engineering kind of ingenuity to create 
this particular saber and most of the other ones you see come out of Soros Hold and Darth Alice sabers and, and other sabersmiths like Hamptons. Um, oh, there's so many out there. Um, I'll try to put as many as I can in, in the um, comments section. But um, like Ham Hamptons hand handcrafted lightsabers could leaps to mind. Um, uh, can't, well, <clears throat> anyway. So this is the Solo's Hold uh, Four Switch. You can see, very loud, nice and bright, and um, just really collector's quality type type of thing here. We're talking large, large investment. This is not something you'll see me using it from time to time, um, but probably not a ton in combat because this is um, rather pricey. Um, but again. When you get into this kind of range, into this this level, that's what you're going to be ending up in. It, you don't have to go there. You can totally get, and, and it will only be a matter of time before a more affordable version of any saber design hits the market. That's just the way these things go. So, <clears throat> if you see something that's really, really, really expensive, and you really, really, really like it, right? just be patient. Somebody will come around and make something that's that's uh, kind of uh, similar to it or taking advantage of something that's, that's really cool about it. So <clears throat> there you go. Um, other than that, I, I, this is just scratching the surface of what's out there. This is what you're going to see on our videos. Most of the time you're going to see the Ultra Sabers. You will see <clears throat> the Solos Hold Padawans as well. These are... Uh, Again, kind of production, not really production, but small, small run, um, do it yourself. I put these all together, um, and they're, they're, they're all stunts. Um, but again, a little bit more investment for a stunt here. You're looking, this was, all together, this is about 350 for, for for something like this, including parts and labor, and then, of course, the hills itself. Um, all of that. <clears throat> If I had mentioned that before. Um, so there you go. Those three kind of levels, that's kind of what you'll see out there. Gave you a little idea of prices. That I'm not quoting any prices. We don't take any type of uh, anything from any company. We're not going to try to show any favoritism. We try to do this as, as honestly as possible. I'm only going to comment on things that I've used. <clears throat> I know other people have used things and been happy with them so you really can't go wrong out there I don't think um, any company that you go with is going to have pros and cons so try to stay open-minded just look at what you want what you can afford you know what speaks to you and uh, go out there and uh, find one that speaks to you, you know? then come back here and we'll show you how to use it and we'll all have fun together so that's it for me. Um, hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, if you have any more, please put them in the comments. If I don't get to them by typing to you, I'll try to do a video at some point. That's usually what it means. Um, I like to expand on certain topics on that way. So, other than that, thanks for tuning in. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. Happy Sabering.